Welcome to the Introverted Influencer Podcast. I'm your host, Erica Van Slyke. My soul's mission on this planet is to help fellow introverts grow their online influence in a state of feminine flow and ease. While battling the woes of depression, anxiety, and even mom guilt, I've somehow managed to build a six-figure blog without the use of social media and without sacrificing my mental health. If I can do it, you can fucking too. Hello. Welcome to episode 43 of the Introverted Influencer Podcast. It's officially the first episode of 2023. I hope you had a restful relaxing, magical holiday season. I hope you were able to tap into some of that childlike wonder. (laughs) I am fortunately the, the first week of the holidays, the week of Christmas, I tapped into something more than magic. I tapped into a stomach virus that ravaged the household. (laughs) So that wasn't so awesome, but it did really force me to slow down and it kind of gave me an excuse to just really take care of myself. And so I spent the past two weeks If I felt like resting, if I felt like laying in bed, that's what I did. I did not work out. I maybe went on one or two nature walks, but it was needed. And I got a lot of good books as Christmas gifts. So I've been reading a lot more and I even made it a point to read some fiction because I've, I've, kind of got kind of a stigma for some reason that fiction is like a waste of time and it always needs to be an entrepreneurial book or a self-development book to really make it worth the time to read to read and so I made it an effort to read some fiction and it was really good for my soul to just totally zoom out of reality and productivity and my problems for a while. So I hope you got some time away. And I'm not going to lie, I got in that hermit mode. And today, I have been on the struggle bus. I have been procrastinating. I I wanted to show up for you, but I kind of got out of that mode of showing up and putting myself out there. So it's like, I'm kind of starting all over again from having that break because I'm still not comfortable with this guys, but I'm going to power through the discomfort. And today's story, today's message is brought to you by the book that I'm almost finished with. I'm on the last chapter, but it's The Stories We Tell by Joanna Gaines. And it's been really cool reading her book because I see her as like a superhuman, a super woman. I mean, shit. She, she's authored multiple books. She has a TV network. She's got a furniture and decor store, a magazine, a cooking show. She had a successful HGTV series with Fixer Upper and a design business and real estate business. And she has five children and a marriage to tend to. Like, to me, that is so insane. And it was really cool to just understand the way her mind works, to understand her fears and her insecurities in this book. She really gets vulnerable. And there was a particular chapter that 
really resonated with me because I think that for the longest time, I even, before I got out of my nine to five, I always just thought entrepreneurship and owning a business, well, that's just something that people who are very courageous and risk tolerant do. And that's not me because I play it safe. And so it was cool to hear how Joanna Gaines said that she was incredibly risk adverse. Adverse. Had an adversity to risks. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. You get what I'm saying. And I found that to be pretty surprising because it's easy to see someone like that, to see someone who's got it all going on and and to just assume that they don't have fears, they don't have insecurities, that they're just naturally confident and everything they touch just turns to gold. And in this particular chapter, she discusses the importance of vulnerability not only to have like meaningful relationships, but a meaningful career and a meaningful life. And she talks about the first time she decided to take a major risk in her life and to start the the Magnolia store, the first original decor shop that she opened up when she was a young mom and she talks about how she goes to the uh, wholesale market with all of the retailers and the, the vendors for the first time with her mom when she's decided to open up this shop and she goes and picks out all this inventory and on the way home, just a flood of doubt. Like, who am I to do this? This is going to fail. I can't believe we just spent all of this money on something that I don't even know if I can do, if I can pull this off, that that flood of fear and insecurity washed over her to the point where her mom had to pull over the car because she got physically sick. And she basically had to work her way through it. And her revelations on this are really beautiful. Let me, I'm going to pull it up in the book because I just, I don't want to paraphrase what she said. Okay, so she pulled herself together after almost getting physically ill from the money she just spent. And she decided, no, I, this is going to be, this is going to be messy but I'm going to give it everything I've got. And here I'm going to pull from page 35 of the stories we tell. Everything about opening that little shop felt vulnerable. Magnolia was full of uncertainty and risk. I still worried people wouldn't like it, that they'd hate the products and this whole thing would be a big failure but I would go through with it anyway. As I was learning with every wavering step I took, there was no way to chase a dream without being comfortable with failure. No way to deepen my well of creativity without sinking into uncertainty. No way of finding out if courage could ring louder than fear unless I tried. That's what living vulnerably was offering me. It was the only way I'd learned to confidently push aside the lie of fear so I could live and share my story in fullness and in truth. I can see how it may seem simpler, safer, to hang back, to avoid walking through unknown doors carrying all that stuff we work so hard to keep hidden but it seems to me there's no use in pretending that any of us are safe from hurt, pain, or even disappointment. I'm starting to think we wouldn't want to be. Without hurt, we can never know trust. Without pain, we can never know what wholeness feels like. 
to love, and to belong. And without disappointment, we can never know triumph. Man, my job right there. She then even goes on later on in the chapter to talk about how even once she had this realization, it's not like the fear disappeared. But she learned how to actually feel safer, what she says, in freedom's free fall. And then she talks about the next time she had to step through fear when she started her blog. But imagine if she never would have stepped through that fear, if she never would have leaned in, if she never would have allowed herself to be vulnerable. God, that would have... (laughs) That would be such a shame. I mean, look at everything she's done and accomplished. And so I think we need to recognize that anything worthwhile is going to come with risk. And a life worth living is going to require us to lean in and to to be vulnerable and to realize that This idea of certainty and safety, it's really futile. It's an illusion. And I think right now, in the state of our world and the state of our economy, things can feel so out of control. And so we can spiral further into these like worst case scenarios but you've got to realize that that is, that's a lie. That's not a true fear. That is not a predator, like a lion or a bear right in front of you. That's a made up scenario. And you can't allow yourself to spiral out of control like that. You've got to shatter that lie. And that's where faith comes in some sort of spiritual practice is really what's anchored me through a lot of it too, is just trusting and knowing that somehow love, love prevails and it all works out. And anytime something has gone wrong, it's either been a beautiful rerouting and it's knocked me onto a more authentic, more fulfilling path, even if I didn't feel like it at the time. Um, Some of the rejection that I suffered in more of the corporate world, while it hurt at the time, I'm, I'm thankful for it because it knocked me onto this path, this creative path, this entrepreneurial path where I do have freedom. But, of course, I never could have appreciated the feeling of triumph, of finding my own path, the more aligned path, if I hadn't experienced all of the rejection from kind of trying to force something that was never really meant to work out. And another thing worth mentioning, while while I do want to stress the the beauty of living life in flow and ease that still comes with discomfort because if if you hadn't felt discomfort and if you haven't stepped through discomfort you're not going to know what flow and ease is either and um and so all of the good things the really awesome triumphs are of course what's required is stepping through some discomfort. And to wrap it up, I do kind of want to close out on another passage in this chapter um, on, on fear and vulnerability. So Joanna sums, kind of sums up this message. When I think back to that moment, I decided to start the blog or when I said yes to my first design project and every time I've said yes since showing up, even though I wasn't an expert when I didn't know for sure if I could rise to the occasion, walking through each door is what led me to the next opportunity. 
Now I can see it as the recurring theme in my life. Every time I've been willing to open up and grow someplace new. And only when I started to string these chapters of my life together could I see that vulnerability is why I'm here, but also what led me here, wanting to share my story with you. So that is today's message, and I think she summed it up beautifully. Do the thing, take the risk, bet on yourself. Don't don't get stuck in this false notion of predictability or safety because for God's sake, we're on a spinning ball that goes around a even larger ball of fire. (laughs) I mean, come on now. Let's let's get real. (laughs) Okay. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for spending time with me. And if you are not feeling like all amped up about the new year just yet, and you're not ready to like get at it and go, that's okay. Like the holidays can take a lot out of you, especially with all the sickness going around, the yucky weather. Like if you still need to rest up and draw in on your inner strength, winter is a good time to do it. So I will see you next week. Thank you so much for stopping by this week. I make no money from this show. Actually, it costs me money to produce and host. So the best way you can show your support for this passion project of mine is by leaving the show a five-star written review on Apple. Also, if you would like to contribute monetarily to the show, you can leave a tip in my digital tip jar, which I have the link in the show notes. You can always share it with a friend who you think could benefit from the message or even better. You can take a screenshot of this episode, upload it to your Insta stories and tag me in it at Designing Vibes. Sending you my love.